Hey, hey, okay, so in today's video, I'm gonna go over the basics of OmniGraph, and then we have added to the robot a differential controller and our first camera sensor. Um, now, on a side note, I am struggling a bit with the EC2 remote latency. I'm not loving the experience, but obviously it buys me a bit of time while I am uh, doing research on buying a new machine, but there are so many options. I don't know whether to go new or used, laptop or desktop, and then 3070, 3080, 3090, or do I get one of the 40 series or 50 series, or do I really go all out and get an A5000 or 6000? Um, and I obviously don't quite know what the workloads and where the bottlenecks are gonna be, but I'm putting together a lot of information, doing a lot of research at the moment, and in one of the upcoming videos, I'll put together all the info I've gotten and uh, compare what the specs are on the Isaacson site, and uh, some of the forums I'm gonna go through and then which machine I'm gonna go with and I might even manage to source a couple of machines and then show differences between them. But anyway, onto the video, I hope you enjoy it. Bye. Okay, now just diving into OmniGraph, the real basics. So OmniGraph is a visual scripting language that provides the ability to implement actions and reactions in an otherwise static Omniverse world. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this in intro to OmniGraph just to show you what that means. I've already done it once. I'm just gonna redo what I've done. So we're gonna create here shape a cube. Okay, and then let's also create shape cone all right there's our cone let's move it to the side all right so what we are going to do um let's just assume this is not showing so we would go to window graph editors action graph and we can see the action graph appears here all right and we want a new action graph and we're going to pull the cube in and the first thing is we want to read what the cubes um coordinates are so what we want to do is we actually want to put the cone above the cube and whenever we move the cube anywhere the cone reacts to what that is and moves at exactly a certain space above that cube so what we want to do this is the cube read attributes and we want to read its um, translate okay then we want to get an add node it's going to add two values together and we want a constant point 3d constant point 3d and for the constant value let's just say we want it two points above our cube it's going to add two to the z-axis okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take the value from that constant point 3d which will be 002 and that'll go into the first section of the add and then the value that it's read from the box We'll go into the second part of the add, so it'll add those values together. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the cone and we're going to drag that in. And we want to write to the cone. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the attribute. And again, we're going to pick the translate value again. And we're going to pull the sum through to value. And then the last thing we've got to do is we've got to trigger this. So we're just going to say tick. You can say on tick so basically for every frame that happens it's going to evaluate that and that goes through to execute in and then if we run it it should work so we see as we run that cone jumps up above the the cube and then as we move the cube that is re-evaluating at every tick and it moves the cone just to above the cube now coming back to the robot we built a little bit earlier, we need to add a differential controller just to make it go forward and backwards. And we could just go to the OmniGraph and create an action graph, but there are some pre-made templates. So let's see here, if we go to Tools, Robotics, OmniGraph controllers, um, and these are just common ones, you can add a differential controller. And what we need to do is we just need to choose what is the robot or the prim that it's going to be related to. So that's our simple robot. And the wheel radius is 0.375 and distance between wheels is 1.5. And then we just need to specify what the joint names are that's going to be doing the driving. So if we look at the simple robot, it's our back left joint and our back right joint. Okay, and if we add that, uh, sorry, there's one thing we have to do. Simple robot, add physics articulation root. Okay, now we can add this. And if we look at graphs, it's added this differential controller. 
So let's right tick here and open the graph. And we can see if we zoom in. So we've got a few things. So here's the actual articulation controller, which we don't have to set any values in. What we're looking at is the differential controller, which has a bunch of properties and those properties will feed into the velocity command. So and we can see here our desired linear velocity is zero. We've got this value joint names, and this was created when we had the little wizard come up. So the joint names are back right joint and back left joint. So this articulation controller has everything it needs to now move the robot. So if we play, we'll see it'll just sit still because we haven't put any values in there. But if we go to the differential controller and we say desired linear velocity is one, we play it's going to start moving and if we change that to minus one it starts going in the opposite direction now we've also got a fancier version of that that we can add that ties in keyboard inputs so we're just going to go through the same steps so we got our simple robot add physics articulation root tools robotics and add that same differential controller with the same values and this time we just check on this item which is use keyboard control and you see it's going to add a whole bunch of extra nodes so let's look at our graphs differential controller and open graph and if we go to view frame all you can see there are a lot more nodes and if we also expand this graph here we can see each of the elements so just to try and explain what's happening here if we click here and this is a read keyboard state so if we click on the d key so this is linked to the w a s and d key so if we click on the d key it then maps that through to a node that converts that value to a double number value and then it sends that through to this node which just basically going to multiply two values and it multiplies the value that comes through when you click on the d key and a constant value which is minus one so this you'll click the d key that will result in the value one and this minus one will get multiplied by one which will give us minus one and this it'll go through to this add node and i'll explain in a second but that minus one will then go through to multiply again by this constant value which is six so it'll be minus one times six which will give us minus six and it'll go all the way through to the controller which is the desired angular velocity and then if we look at this node which is the a key so it's exactly the opposite so it's also going to convert to double and it's going to add it here except it doesn't have the times by minus one so this will give a positive value and if we click on this a it will go all the way down the tree and times by six will give us a value of six so to, if you press on the d key you'll get minus six if you press on the a key you'll get six and that'll go into the desired angular velocity and then we've got a similar thing going here for the w and the s forward and backwards again it's either times by positive number or a negative number and then we've got this constant here which is 5 so if you push the W it'll be positive 5 if you push the S it'll be negative 5 and it'll go through to a different property here let's just see all of this in action if we push play and I'm going to zoom out a bit and I'm going to push W it's going to go forward and I'm going to push S now it's going to start going backwards and I'm going to push A and the torque is going to go around to the right and I push D and the torque is going to go around to the left and then I can push those in combination as well. Now we're going to add some sensors to our robot, an RGB sensor and a 2D LiDAR sensor. Now we're going to add an X form to act as a container for our sensors. So we go to simple robot, right click, create, X form and we rename that to run sensor and we're going to position that to the front of the robot
and we're going to right click and add physics rigid body and now we're going to add a cube to the front sensor just so that we can see where the, the X form is right click create mesh cube and let's just put its scale down to 0.1 and let's put its Z at 0 so let's reset that there we go and then we can move it a little bit to the middle and forward okay we're going to rename the cube and we're going to go to sensor mount and add physics colliders preset Okay, now we're going to add a camera to the mount. So add, sorry, create camera. And then we're going to go down to the camera and just make that minus 90 degrees so it faces forward. Okay. And then we're just going to move it forward a little bit like that to the edge. And then we can look through the perspective and see what it looks like through the camera. We can see that's our front view from the camera. Let's go back to normal perspective. Okay, now I'm going to create a bunch of prims that we can put around the robot and that can be used as obstacles and that we can view through the camera. So I'm just going to right click sort of different places in the UI, create, mesh, cone. And there we have a bunch of obstacles I've created around our simple robot. And if we switch back to camera view, we can see our obstacles in front of us, camera. And then if we want to have two views, two viewports to view camera view and perspective view at the same time, we can go to window, viewports, activate viewport two, and then on viewport two, we go to camera view. There we got both views at the same time. And if we move something on the one, we can see it moves in the other. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be on to the next video now, which I'll hopefully publish later today or tomorrow. And in the meantime, if you're enjoying this content, please subscribe or click like. Adios.